Okay, we're going to start on our album covers. I have two pieces cut at eight and three quarters by eight and three quarters. One piece cut at two and a half by eight and three quarters. Play your tape along the edges, around the perimeters, around the perimeter, and uh, set that aside for a minute. And then I have this is DuPont Tyvek envelopes, and I get bought these at Staples. And I'm going to cut it down to act as a reinforcer for my spine, just so that it doesn't tear. It has a little more give to it. It's not going to rip. Um, my covers won't rip. So I cut off this, this uh, bottom piece here, throw it away, and then I will turn around and cut off this one here. And this has like a little, like a little perforated piece like that. So I cut that off too because just because I don't want it to rip off later in my project and cause an issue. And then I'll just cut a small sliver on one side to open it up so it's just one giant sheet. And this needs to be Spine is two and a half by eight and a quarter, eight and three quarters. So I usually like to double it. So if it's two and a half, I'm going to do it just five. Um, let's just do six. That'll work. Six inches by eight and three quarters. So I'm going to take my spine a little more tape to it just because I want to make sure it's good and stuck down. Okay. And then make sure you burnish your tape real well. You will need 12 by 12 paper for the cover because it is lot larger. The eight and a half by eleven just won't cut it. I wish I could make it work. I'm gonna take three sheets though. That's okay. I have the 12 or 12. So we're gonna remove the tape back in. Some of this okay. lining it up on my on my grid and kind of centering it. I have to do it sideways so I can see and just kind of Laying it down and press it down. And then back side, furnish it real well. Learn this tri trick from Kathy Orta. I watched her 
videos forever. Seems to work best for me. I haven't had any issues with any of my albums falling apart or anything. So we're going to stick to what we know. And then the next thing would be to add your quarter inch score tape along the edges. And this will be your, your the gauge for your gap. Trim a little off there. This just helps make sure ensure that that you have enough space in between your covers and your spine so that you don't cause bunching or scrunching or any of that fun stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim off this little bit because it will bug me. that. Now I'm going to add tape to both sides of this Tyvek flop. What's my daughter going over the baby gate? No, we don't have babies. We have dogs. So in order to keep them out of her room, but be able to keep her door open, just like I do, we put gates in to keep the dogs out of the bedrooms when we don't want them in there. Okay, so next we're going to add our chipper covers. I'm going to add one at a time because it works best for me to add one and wrap it, add another and wrap it. So this is quarter inch tape you leave in. Let's show you real close. There's a little the score tape right next to the chipboard here. You want to leave in. You want to butt your chip would up right next to you want to align it. Now, my little trick for aligning, I don't know if anybody else does this or not because I'm so off most of the time. I want to keep it aligned. I will at, put my Timmy ruler up here and I will butt the spine up against it. Then I will butt this up against the scores tape spacer and right up against that ruler as well and then stick it down and then it it's more for me it's straighter most of the time I got stuck okay so like that now what I do Usually you put the other side on and then cover it. But what I do is I take my 12 by 12 sheet and I I've worn out. I've practically rubbed off all the lines on this ruler. 
it's really hard to see. So I will, about three quarters of an inch, I mark it. And three quarters of an inch, I mark it. Make sure my tape was on. I could make sure I had enough to cover the edges here. I need to find, see where that is your connector and point. Your, that will be your, yeah, I'm tired. My gap for my cover. I'm going to make sure I have tape along that connecting point. And I'm going to do that with all of them. I think I need to go ahead and apply that there. Yeah. Let's go ahead and apply the other piece of chipboard to this. So, and this. The cover. I'm going to do it this way. Tape. And tape. I'm just going to move part of it. Again, I will align my ruler up to the top. Doesn't help that my cutting mat is kind of warped, I think. So I'm going to line that up. Line that up to the score tape in the, set in the middle. Stick it down. Turn it over. And finish it. I don't know about you, but my tools seem to sprout legs all the time and walk away. Okay, got that. I'm going to add tape to the connecting points here, or here, and along here. This is where the score tape, the quarter inch score tape is on the other side. You want to make sure you get all these, all your connecting points, all your, there we go. Sometimes it helps if you lift up and you can see that line a little better. is on the back side of which will be the front cover and back cover of our chipboard and our album. So I'm going to remove the tape back in. I always fold it over a little bit. It's easier for me. All right. I'm making this more difficult than it has to be. That's not really. Oh. No, 
know, just this is a personal preference of mine. I like to add just some ATG in through here to help hold it. And it's a personal choice. You can use more score tape, but I found this works just as well for this because you have the score tape on the outer edges. Now, down in this corner here, I have my marks. I don't know if you can see that or not. I have my quarter inch marks. So I will align my chip for a piece. up with that and stick it down. Now it's not going to cover completely on my spine, which is fine because that's what my second sheet of chip works for. But this just makes it a little more manageable for me to work with. And we'll go ahead and align my ruler up Again, take my craft knife and just get that, get that off just to get it out of the way. And I'll do the same for the back piece. Just does not want to be cooperative today. No, it's going to overlap just a little bit. So take a piece of your quarter inch tape. Which mine sprouted legs locked. There it is. Take a piece of your quarter inch tape and just place it along the edge here. This will hold it in place. Now, you're going to also put a piece of tape along the quarter inch here where you will oops ah that stuck okay right. it's a quarter inch along this edge where we're going to overlap them a bit now you don't want to overlap them on a joint, on a, on a folding point, so you want to do it just a little bit over, which this will bring it about to the middle of my spine. So, move this tape back in. Move this tape back in. Give yourself enough space, which is not going to happen here right now. Overlap. I don't know if you can see this real well, but overlap just about a half inch. I'm going to this up on my grid there. About there. Yeah. 
On this side, what we just put on, you'll see this, your excess here, which you'll trim off. Um, like I said, I use, I, I do the three quarter inch, it works best for me, just, just so I have room for error. And I trim that off. Over here, a quarter of an inch. Okay. Then yes, I'm saying okay again. Play your tape. You can use whatever floats your boat. I think I have plenty of room. I'm going to use my half inch spray tape. And I apply it to the perimeter around the edge of my paper. And it will to get hurt. This is pretty much how I put together all my albums. Um, like I said, I'm a bit tired, but I'm still managing. What happens when you don't sleep for days and then all of a sudden you sleep for 12 hours straight and it's like, wow. So, make sure you burnish all your edges with the burnish your tape down just to give it a good stick. Make sure it's not gonna come undone. Right. And then I take my handy dandy little tool. Ah, what is it? There you are. Everything's falling. My perfect trim ruler. And you can get these at Scrabble Dabba Do. And I believe perfecttrim.com. Perfect, perfecttrimruler.com. That scrap a dab do has them as well. Okay, and I have the first one. There's two, um, two versions. This is the first version, which has the, I believe it's the eighth inch. Yeah, it's an eighth of an inch. Is the widest point, which now they have one out that has a quarter inch, which is what you want. It would it works better. So I usually align mine up to the corner and then just get give it a little push up so that I have a quarter of an inch and it makes miters your corners beautifully or it helps miter your corners beautifully so that when you're wrapping you have enough to wrap around without bunching up or having a gap. That was my problem. I could never get that right. I was cut it either way too short or way too long and it just never worked out right. And then along came this and yay! Happy camper. Alright, there we go. So, round two 
to do is kind of condition your condition your cardstock to fold around. So let's see. I like usually doing lifting it up and kind of giving it a little bend in. Kind of gives it a little bend to start shaping it. Makes it a little easier. And both flaps as well. So all four sides. I'm gonna take my my little. I use it as a bone folder, but I don't know where my bone folder went. It's around here somewhere. But until then, I use this. So at this point, you can go ahead and. Remove the tape from the inside here. There you go. That works. And then I will move this tape back in from this side. And you start in the center and you pull it down. You kind of want to Make sure you really reinforce that line, that fold. Okay, and you're going to pull it over. And I always work from the center out. Sorry about that. My daughter is playing. Playing video games and she is loud. Okay, so we're going to turn around, do the other long side. Now in the corners, you're going to push in and down. And I usually use bone folder, but like I said, I don't know where it's at. So this is my my makeshift one right now until I can get another one soon. Again, push in and. Press. It's kind of like wrapping the ends of a, a present. That's what it reminds me of. Just to make sure those corners are smooth. Make sure you get that a little bit of a crease there. Pull this one up. And in the center, work the way out. Then you have. Really nice corners. I'll see if you can see that. Let's see. The edges turn out really nice. And push in and down. So like you were folding the present. Center and work your way out. And there we go. There's those corners. So at this point, you have 
your cover. You might want to get it conditioned. Don't smush it. Don't smush it flat because that will break your your binding. Your spine. It's a nice. This is going to be a big album. So it's not a mini. It's a maxi. How's that? It would be a maxi. A maxi mini. I'm really tired. Sorry. So, like I said, our 12, our 8x8 papers will fit on there, and they'll be having black border all the way around, which is fine. Doesn't bother me. But what I might do is slide it over a smidge and put in, put over a decorative spine cover as well, just to give it a little extra. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> And I'm going to put in my hinge next. But before I do that, I have something else in mind. I will come right back and show you.